Hola guys, welcome back. So in this video, we'll be looking to solve elliptic problems using something known as the Lagrange Multiply. And this is such a powerful tool because this could solve pretty much any given um, elliptic problem. Okay, you know, equation in the form of an ellipse or circle. So what does the Lagrange Multiply tell us? Well, we know that it tells us the Lagrange Multiply is used to solve elliptic constraint optimization problems. So this would be great to calculate the maximum distance and the, minimize, and the minimum distance from say the origin okay so what do we tell us here the aim is to maximize or minimize this unit equation or unit circle in, in a 2d space where, our, where we have x squared plus y squared subject to a given function which is tends to be in a form of an ellipse okay such as x squared plus b times xy plus c times y squared equals some constant then we then at this point we use the Lagrangian and didn't notice this kind of curly L okay this isn't my retarded L this is actually how I write my L's for a Lagrangian and this is the official definition so so the Lagrangian for XY equals a unit equation a unit circle minus lambda times the elliptic function okay and at this point we're going to calculate partial derivatives and hence find um, the coordinates for x and y okay guys so let's start this problem we're going to start an example a really nice example so this is good okay okay so the first example is going to be this or actually the only example okay so suppose i let my function f x y be defined by this elliptic expression which would be 5x squared plus 6xy plus 5y squared equals 8 okay where the unit circle equation which was defined previously is x squared plus y squared okay so this always tends to equal 1 in general if you have a cubic if you have three terms x y z it'll be x squared plus y squared plus z squared up to n possible uh, combination of variables okay so now that we have this information this tells us that the Lagrangian according to the definition of the Lagrangian was u minus lambda f therefore we can have x squared plus y squared minus lambda times this expression in this case we want to rearrange this to write minus 8 so put onto one side of the equation so we're gonna have 5x squared plus 6xy plus 5y squared minus 8 okay now here's the easy part so all we do at this point is calculate partial derivatives okay so now we don't need the tom function anymore so what do we have here so first things first so differentiating partially with respect to x you know what we're going to have here so y is constant okay and lambda is also constant so we, so so far we're going to have from here 2x minus lambda so you can just leave the constant outside now differentiate inside we're going to have 10x plus 6y and everything is 0 and this equals to 0 because of the first derivative properties and the first order condition so likewise with differentiate respect to y we're going to get a very similar result so 2y here minus lambda inside here what we're going to get so this is 0 we're going to get 6x plus 10y and everything is 0 and it equals to 0 now, all we gotta do at this point is, you know, solve for lambda. So if I make lambda the subject here and lambda the subject here, so what are we gonna get? For the first expression, I plus this across and divide this expression across. So we're gonna have 2x over 10x plus 6y. And likewise, we're gonna equate to this lambda and repeat the repeat technique. So plus this side across to the right hand side and divide by 6x plus 10y. We're gonna have 2y over 6x plus 10 why now if you were to solve this um, quickly just multiply these fractions across eventually you know I've already done this and just to save more time you're going to get the 3x squared equals 3y squared which can be written as x squared equals y squared and again this tells us that y equals plus minus x or vice versa now, what do we do at this point? Well, really, all you're going to do now is just substitute these variables, these values, into the function. 
Okay, so substitute these into the function. What's going to happen? So the function recall was at the top. So we're going to replace. For example, we're going to, first we're going to choose um, when y equals plus x. See what happens, and then when what happens when y equals negative x. Okay. So okay, so we're going to replace y with plus x at the moment. What do we have here? So at this point, if y equals plus the uh, just write x, y equals x, then the function above is going to equal 5x squared plus 6x squared plus 5x squared again. So 5x squared plus 6x squared plus 5y squared equals 8. Therefore, we're going to have um, 5 plus 6 plus 5 is going to be 16x squared equals 8 x squared equals half that means x equals plus minus square root of um, half which is quarter. okay so that's going to be one solution so plus minus and that's the case if x equals plus minus quarter what we're going to have here is um, replacing this so yeah replacing um quarter into the expression so given that x equals y so we know that the first one would be quarter quarter because they equal each other or negative quarter and negative quarter okay so now we're going to do the same thing and this time we're going to replace y because i need more space here let me just quickly delete the board rub out the board okay so i just rubbed it all out so now let's go back so suppose i said if if y equals negative x okay so all we're going to do now is replace x y with negative x so here we're going to have still 5x squared plus so this no this will be minus now so be minus 6x squared and this will represent um, squaring a negative x would be plus positive x so be plus 5x squared and this equals a of course so now collecting like terms, we've got 10, subtract 6, we're going to have 4x squared equals 8. At this point, um, halving it, we're going to get x squared equals 2. Square root 2 will be plus minus root 2. Okay. And again, hence our result is going to be our coordinates. So in this case, because it's inverted, if x equals root 2, that means y equals negative root 2 and vice versa if x is negative root 2 then y is positive root 2 now let's look at this visually okay so now we have a coordinate so now what is going to be the shortest and longest distance from the origin well you know i think it's quite obvious at this point quarter is smaller than root 2 so um quarter from zero distance from zero to zero to origin to the coordinates is obviously going to be a quarter and likewise root 2 but geometrically speaking Let's assume quarters here. So we're gonna have quarter quarter here, and at the same time, quarter quarter here. So it's gonna be perfectly aligned. It should be a quarter. And root two and negative root two. So should be let's just say root two is up here, negative root two is over here. So really our shape at this point, our elliptic shape is just gonna be something like like this. And I know it's not good, but this is what we're kind of looking at. Okay. So we've got a negative quarter, negative quarter. This one's going to be positive on the x-axis will be root two, negative root two, and uh, negative root two, positive root two. So yeah, just looking at distance from the origin, is it going to be okay? It's not going to be a, it's not going to be a quarter here. At this point, we're going to calculate what, what are we going to calculate here? We need to calculate this using Pythagoras theorem. So this is going to be a quarter here, like we just suggested, and a quarter here. So really, we're just interested in this distance here, x. And likewise, we're going to do the same thing here. You know, instead of calling this x, let me call this um, h1 and h2, just to reflect the hypotenuse. Okay, so here's going to be root 2, and distance is root 2. So now, geometrically, we can do this. So calculating the distance using the distance formula. So this is even another step on its own. Okay, so let's do this um, very quickly. Because I'm going to use some space over here. So I'm going to just look at the top half of the equation. Okay, so for H1, using Pythagoras' theorem, if you guys recall Pythagoras' theorem, very popular guy, kind of cool guy, I guess, at the time. He said that um, that the square dead 
the area of the square of the adjacent side times the opposite side would equal the area of the hypotenuse okay so we're trying to say the block over here times the block over here equals the, the, the larger block on this side or on a square so let's just say that quarter squared plus a quarter squared which is these two sides equals the hypotenuse squared okay this will be the same for this one so what do we have here quarter squared plus quarter squared so we have 1 over 16 plus 1 over 16 1 over 8 and then square root 1 over 8, we're going to have h1 equals 1 over 8, which is 1 over root 8, which is all you can say. Likewise, for h2, we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to have square root 2 times square root 2, which is just simply 2 plus 2, equals h2 squared. That means h2 is clearly just 2. Square root 4 is 2. And that's it guys, so the shorter side is going to be 1 over root 8 and the longer side is going to be 2. Anyway, I hope this video helps and um, if there's any problems or maybe some calculations which I hope I didn't get to, then I think it should be okay.